Hey, hi everyone, this is Konzel here, and today we are going to talk about Blood Wave Necromancer. So, for I actually have two builds to share with regards to Blood Wave. In fact, the uh, Blood Wave with the army and the Blood Search is actually a, a variant of my Blood Search army build, that, uh, which is a previous video. In fact, I was looking at the uh, build, and I realized that this might actually be stronger. So, I want to cover it in this video too. And we also cover a version where there are no minions, so we go solo. Yeah, you can see these are the sacrifice uh, bonuses that we get. So let me talk about the blood search wave uh, army first. So instead of having a golem, we are going for blood wave here, but we are still having our other nine minions to ensure that these nine minions do proc the uh, mini nova from blood search. Uh, that's a lot more props, right? And also damage. Now, the the best way for me to go about talking uh, of about this blood search wave army is uh, actually very straightforward. I'm just going to compare it to the blood search army that we did in the previous video. So first off, in terms of skill tree, it's actually pretty uh, similar. Okay, the only difference really is just taking the three points from Golem Mastery to Blood Wave. Yeah, that's it. The rest of it uh, remains the same. Okay. Now, gear is the place where we have a bit more difference per se. Yeah. So, Harlequin Crest, and yeah, no brainer, right? That's because for all function of this build. But if you look at the uh, previous Blood Search Army with a Blood Wave, your minions having a Golem, essentially, is the best way. If I do this, it's more obvious what the changes, right? <laughs> okay, essentially, when uh, by dropping Golem to go for Blood Wave, we have to drop Blood Artisan's Caress or Temerity, Tumeri, depending on uh, which setup you are going for, as per my uh, previous video. But basically, we have to put Blood Getter's uh, aspects here in the Chance Armor slot. And we stick the aspect of the embalmer here on the pants. Okay. For the gloves, instead of the uh, blood getters, yeah, we, we re basically remove blood getters, better getters up to the uh, chest slot. In the uh, glove slot, we took aspect of ref mask chosen, we put it in here, and then change it to the other aspect that is related to overpower. Which instead of increasing attack speed, it's giving us bonus damage based on uh, the amount of maximum life that we heal. I can tell you, you heal a lot here. Okay, a lot. It's crazy. It's very, very easy to get this uh, max bonus at 60%. And the reason why we draw attack speed is because we are actually going for a one hand weapon together with a uh, codex, offhand codex setup here. And because you're using a one-hand weapon, your attack speed will, base attack speed will already be faster than a two-hand weapon, which is the reason why we dropped the uh, attack speed uh, aspect from the previous video. Another reason also because uh, this this aspect of Rafa chosen can be a bit slower to get the effect, other than when your uh, key passive procs. This is something I want to talk about because now we are using Blood Wave. Blood Wave is a ultimate, right? So we can then use this fast blood aspect, which is uh, basically the blood ops reducing your ultimate cooldown by 0 0.5 to 1 second. It's very, very straightforward. So the more blood ops you generate, the faster your blood wave uh, cooldowns and the faster you'll be able to use it. And we will have a lot of blood ops because there is this aspect here called Tidal Aspect where Blood Wave fires two additional waves, each dealing 50 to 60% less damage than the previous. So it doesn't sound great, right? 50 to 60% less damage than the previous, but we are not using this for the damage. We are using for this for the fact that it fires two additional waves. And how Blood Waves work is that the most important factor of Blood Wave is that it leaves behind three blood ops as it travels. 
Oh, and it slows as well. So technically speaking, you can use Blood Wave before you even use Decrepify. Right? But Decrepify still lasts longer. Decrepify lasts for 10 seconds. But most importantly is the fact that Blood Waves leaves behind three obsessive travels. If we spawn two additional waves, that's another three plus three. Total, we get nine blood ops from casting one blood wave. That is the beauty of the uh, blood wave together, the combination of the aspect, tidal aspect together with the base blood wave upgrade. And then look at these two other blood up, blood up related aspects that we have here. The first one here. It reduces your cooldown by one second at max row. Here, we have Blood Ops granting 20 Essence at full life. And it's actually very easy to get full life here. Because you're spawning so many Blood Ops, each Blood Ops heals you for 50% of your life. You are spawning 9 Blood Ops. I assure you that you will not have problem getting this. And what this also means is that you get 180 Essence right after cast. Potentially 180 Essence right after casting your blood wave. So obviously you can only collect half of your blood ops before your essence is full. And you spend your stuff, spend your blood search, and then you collect the remaining and then you spend your blood search again. So yeah I'll, I'll do a more detailed part about the gameplay style later or the rotation if you understand what it means. Uh, it's a Genshin term. Now other than that the rest of the uh, gear doesn't change now but since we're having two weapons here I personally would recommend having like one overpower and maybe one damage versus uh crowd control enemies just to uh, make it less uh, heavily focused on overpower per se. But you are going to trigger a lot of overpowers because you are using a one hand weapon, you're going to be much faster. Okay, and remember what I was talking about the blood ops generating a lot from the blood wave, right? We also get this. We also get this is how we get to get sixty percent bonus. Ah, okay. So, all in all, I look at this build by dropping one golem, blind wave, and changing my setup to be a one hand with off hand. Which then, by the way, damage wise is still okay. When you get good rolls on both of them, the damage on the tider and the blood blood buff aspect is uh, still good. Right, your overall damage doesn't fall off too much versus a two-hand weapon. Now the only trade-off here is obviously this, where your blood search Nova's uh, echo now does uh, lesser damage instead of previously when we use it on two-hand weapon, we can do like the best case scenario seventy percent of your original. Now it's forty percent of your original, so you lose thirty percent of your original uh, blood search damage, Nova's damage, but in return you get blood wave that generates a lot of blood. Ops, which then coupled with all of this as a very good synergy gives you the ability to spend your blood really spend your blood search without using your generator at least for the uh when you at least when you have blood wave ready to use and more importantly because blood op from the paragon board fortifies you as well fortifies you as well it means that you get very very high for high fortify right off the bat or at least uh, between spamming and completely draining your essence. But what it means is that you'll still get fortified earlier than the if you were using a golem. Now, we do lose out the ability to taunt and also to generate more corpses. But it's still, oh, I think it's still not so bad because we still have uh, six skeletal warriors here with 15% chance for each of them to grab a corpse. And you have Boomish here. Uh, leaving behind a cost and fortifying you for 11% of your base life. So I think it's still fine in terms of like consuming your cops, the cost consumption rate, and in turn giving us more blood ops. And because we sacrifice Golem, there are pretty decent options. We are not using attack speed increase because we are using a one hand weapon, right? So I'm gonna go with 30% critical strike damage. Now, if you so prefer, obviously you can also use you can replace this with the uh, aspect that gives you attack speed. Right? If you prefer attack speed, by all means go ahead. Okay, I'll probably experiment with the two of them uh, in actual game, right? Actual game itself, just to see how it works out. But yeah, 
I think that the 30% critical strike damage is something that I want here. Maximum life is fine too for a fortified build, right? Uh, try to make sure that we always get healthy. Giving yourself more room to be always healthy, per se. But yeah, I think I like the 30% critical, uh, critical strike damage here. Because we are still going to try to get crit rate from our stats. And a bit of crit damage as well. So that we are able to uh, do crits and when over how happens that's when we do some really good damage with uh, overpower crits okay so basically this is the gist of how the blood search wave army build will work and it's pretty much a a different version of the blood search army now in theory it feels better the uh the version with blood wave instead of golem but I think it's very, very dependent on uh, how good the Blood Artisan's Curious is. So there's a couple of unknown factors for this uh, unit right now. Number one is whether or not the dam what, what is the percentage damage bonus that we get for after picking up a Blood from this Blood Artisan's Curious and for how long does the buff last? Okay. Second, the effect here where the blood, the free Blood Spirit Dealing bonus damage based on your current life percentage. We don't know how is the bonus damage scaling. How it's like? Is it one percent per current life percent, or even up to five percent? Right. I mean, I'm just throwing out numbers here because this is just theory crafting. But you you get what I'm trying to say, right? If it's five percent bonus damage per one percent of your life current life, if your current life is max, you essentially do five hundred percent. Now, obviously, I don't think it would be that broken, but what I'm trying to say is that it has the potential to be good. So that's why whether or not the Blood Search Wave is better or the Blood Search uh, Pure Blood Search Army is better really depends on how this artifact works out. But generally speaking, right now, when I look at the two builds, right, I think personally, I prefer the Blood Search Wave Army. I think this build is stronger, especially in terms of the gameplay. And uh, I'll go into it shortly. But first off, I just want to say that for the Paragon board, right? It is exactly the same as that. I'm sorry, it's exactly the same as that in the Blood Search Army. Okay, exactly the same. I didn't do any changes to this. Build essentially uses the exact same thing. Yep, everything remains the same. Okay, so if you are interested in how the Paragon board works out for the uh, Blood Wave with Blood Search Army build. Do check out the previous video. The link will be in the top right corner and also in the description. The actual link to the, the build is also there as well, so you can refer to. But yep, you can see this is a uh, pretty straightforward. We go for blood bar first. We go at blood, we get blood, then the card leader followed by flash eater. All, all with uh, notes where we actually do some mechanics with regards to it. Okay, so that brings me to the end for the uh, Blood Search Wave Army build. I'm going to talk about the Minerlius build now, right? The solo build. But before that, let me just quickly talk about the gameplay. Okay, for Blood Wave. Uh, it's actually just Blood Search Wave, not just Army. So it's, just, it's kind of straightforward, right? When you start battle, first you decrepify, then you cast your Blood Wave. Once you finish casting a blood wave, you don't even need to wait for the waves to finish uh, spawning. You can just cast blood search, blood search on your enemies till the essence are gone. And then you start collecting the blood ops from your blood wave. Remember, we, we get to spawn nine blood ops in theory. I, I really don't know how it works out, but I'm saying in theory because this is theory crafting. I've not had the chance to test this out in the uh, uh, first beta. Because first beta, I didn't manage to get the tidal aspect, so I couldn't test it out. But essentially, you can collect about five essences. Like, you know, each essence giving you 20 essence uh, base. Max essence, if I didn't run, it's 100. So just collect half of it, and then you spend your blood search again, and you collect remaining four, and then you spend your blood search again because you almost you get almost full essence anyway. So spam is really spam, collect blood ops, spam, collect blood ops. So, so it's really, very, 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 very fast, very smooth, very good. Okay. And now, once you're done with all of this, by now you have cast uh, quite a number of blood search. Probably should be able to get at least two overpowered uh, blood search in there. So you should have killed a decent amount of enemies by now. 
maybe you need to move to the next spot, or if you don't need to move to the next spot, then the next thing to do is you use your blood mist to explode the corpses, and you spawn more blood ops, and then you collect the blood ops. And you have your essence ready. And in fact, you can even collect all these essence. If your essence is ready, you move on to the next elite pack, and you start the whole thing again. Yeah? So what I really, really like about this, uh, by using Blood Wave instead of the Golem, is that you essentially give yourself the ability to continuously spam Blood Search, because Blood Wave takes care of your Essence uh, issues, by right? spawning a whole bunch of Blood Ops, together with the Tidal Aspect. And once you're done with all that, you even have Blood Mist, well, by then you should have a decent amount of corpses, especially from your army, your Blood Wave army. Then, you can use them to generate even more blood ops, right? Because of the aspect that gives you 30% chance to uh, spawn blood ops upon consuming corpses. Each time you consume your corpse, yeah. So, yeah, this is a very, very nice setup. And obviously, yeah, every time you go to a new wave of enemies or new pet enemies, you just cast your decrypt, you're fine. So, it's a very, very smooth process and smooth gameplay or smooth rotation, whatever you call it, I want to call it. And that same rotation works as well uh, for blood for the solo build without any minions. Now, personally, I don't want to recommend this because of uh, how good I think the uh, Death Speaker's pendant is. But obviously, it may not be easy to get these uh, legendaries, right? Or units, right? <laughs> but the irony of it is that this uh, solo build actually is using three units here. Okay? Because we kind of have to for survivability. Because remember, there are no minions. So without any minions tanking damage for us, we are the ones taking the damage all by ourselves. That's why temerity is very, very important here. Okay? The we, we are pretty much guaranteed to get a barrier because of all the healing that we have in this build. Likewise, we are actually using a one-hand weapon here, but instead of using a codex, we are actually using a shield. Because again, going back to the same point, right? we are a solo build. No minions, I want to have a shoe as a good defensive option, the blocking of it, the blocking of damage. And besides, shields in Diablo Floor gives you 80% of your main weapon's base damage. It's quite crazy if you think about it. So yeah, you pretty much get, don't really suffer from any damage loss per se, when you go from two hand to one hand weapon. So it's, it's kind of similar to the Blood Wave versus the Blood Golem. Uh, not a full army build. For army build, we are doing two hand weapon. Once you have blood wave, uh, basically you always have to do one hand weapon so as to because you need more aspects, right? Blood wave alone requires this fast blood aspect as well as tidal aspect for it to have like the full synergy per se. But I guess by using a shoe, we can't use another uh, weapon aspect, right? So we'll be using aspect of the embalmer. And that frees us up to use Blood Artisan's Caress together with uh, Temerity. So this is there. Get yeah, some additional Blood of Jelly, more damage after picking up Blood Ops, more uh, the free bone spirit in spawning. And remember, Blood Wave gives us 9 Blood Ops. So <laughs> upon using Blood Wave, we were pretty much uh, able to get 2 free bone spirits. The last Blood Op coming from other sources, be it Corpse. Uh, cops consumption, etc. Like maybe your your skeletons need some healing. You you cast your skeleton, raise skeleton, or you need a bar from there. You cast raise skeleton, etc. Or you need to replenish your skeletons. Whatever the case is, it should be pretty easy to get the last blood up fairly quickly. So we should the, sorry the last blood up for the second bone spirit. So there is some synergy here definitely for sure. And again, because we're using one-hand weapon, we are not using the aspect of the uh, Rafma Chosen, which gives us the attack speed after when our blood skills have overpower. Now, this is more of a player's choice thing to me. If you want it to be fast, you like spamming, then go oh, by all means go for the aspect of Rafma's Chosen. It's just that with a one-hand weapon, I think we can afford not to get attack speed buff as opposed to a two-hand weapon where I would value attack speed uh, more. So yeah, this gives us a power bonus, and we still have the rest of the stuff in pretty much the same as well of our explosive mist here. Oh, and we get our blood buff as well to be in the amulet slot since I'm not using Death Speaker's pendant here. 
what this means is that uh, with the amulet effect, our Echo Nova should do 45% of our original. If, I'm, if my math didn't work out wrongly. I might be a bit wrong here, but yeah. What I want to say is that we do get a higher damage echo when you solo. You do a solo build. You also have to go for more survivability. But Temerity is a very, very strong survivability item, so that's nice. Okay, and we are using Shield too. In terms of skill build, it is a bit different, but before I go there, let me just talk about the minions, or rather the sacrifice. So we are getting 5% critical hit chance for the sacrifice on the skeletal warriors. For skeletal mages, we are getting overpower damage. I mean, come on, we are doing overpower build, right? And lastly, we are getting critical strike damage, 30%. So that's the book of the date. Now let's go to the skill tree itself. What's the difference for this versus, say, the uh, Blood Wave with uh, Army of Minions? First off, you notice that I dropped this. Okay, I dropped this. Why? Because we, we can't afford the points on this. We can really can't afford the points on this. Because there are more things, small points or more areas that we need to spend on. Okay, we can ever get this as well. Because we need to get ourselves the corpse tendrils. Who? As opposed to a race skeleton that doesn't Oh, okay, to be fair, Ray Skeleton does take up points in other areas, right? But to, the, the most important thing is that because we are doing it solo, we should get these two bonuses here. Okay? So that's where all the points uh, start to funnel into this area. Now, we also need to get this, Death Embrace. Basically, close and least take 6% more damage from you and deal 9% less damage to you. The more important thing here is the dealing 9 damage less damage to us because this is a solo build, no minions. No army, no minions, you're just solo. So that's why I value this three passives a lot more. And these three passives alone take up nine skill points, yeah? Okay. Now we also want the amplify damage uh, bonus. I mean, to, between the amplify damage and uh, the uh, fuel by death, right? Both is fine. They pretty much give the same thing. But for fuel by death, uh, because we have lesser corpses, corpse generation, right? Because we don't have any minions that are generating corpses, unlike the uh, army build. You no, know? it's generating corpse for you, there's generating corpse for you. So there are lesser corpse generation in the solo build, which is the reason why I did not get this. Uh, I want, I do want to get the corpse tendril to help out with uh, pooling. Because uh, this doesn't just pull, this also stands for 3 seconds. So this is very, very helpful for us in a solo build. Okay, so this is the reason why the uh, skill is built up like this. So basically, you have the Crepify, Cops Tendril, uh, and uh, the rest is pretty much the same as the uh, Blood Wave Army build. And the rotation is also the same that I shared earlier. This is this gameplay thingy. So the difference is that you can use a corpse tendril once you get a corpse spawned. Once you see a corpse near the enemies, you can use this. It helps a lot in your survivability, it helps to grow the enemies together, and then allow your blood search to do even better damage. Yep. Right, so that's how the build works for blood op search wave, or rather blood wave solo build. In terms of the uh, Paragon board, there's definitely a difference between this and the uh, Blood Wave with Army, the Army of Minions, because we don't need Cult Leader going solo, right? So the very first board is Blood Buff. Yep, and this is the path, how we are going. Uh, we are getting the defense nodes for the 10, extra 10 intelligence. Now, very, very first glyph. And on starting board, we are going for Copper. Because even if I don't have minions, this 10% physical increased physical damage is still applies for our necro for our blood skills. So this is still good. For the uh, blood buff board, right? 
you'll notice that we're pretty much getting everything on this board other than uh, this board here, the, this random cluster here. And we are getting blood ops fortifying us for 6.7% of maximum life. Because again, this is a build where we have a lot of blood ops, so we should get this early, try to fortify early. Okay, and this board gives you a lot of like overpower and damage while fortify, etc. So the complete synergy is there per se. And then we move on to the next board. In fact, from the blood buff, there's actually two paths that we can go because of so many uh, nodes that we are spending here. So the first, the next spot after this is blood begets blood. So it's very very straightforward, right? We go straight for the good stuff. We get a legendary node. Uh, we get a legendary node here as well. Okay. And from the next point onwards is will be flesh eater linking from the blood begets blood. We get the flesh eater passive. Now although we have lesser corpses here, lesser corpse generation here. We still at least have something like uh, the blood mist, which always gives us three corpses. So we just need two corpses from our enemies. We still have huge flesh. If you're lucky, we'll still be able to get some uh, corpse from that. So this will help. This will help. It's not as consistent. Getting this buff is not as consistent as the uh, blood wave with the army build, but this we'll still be able to get this. And this is a glyph where we are going for crop control. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. I think I missed talking about this glyph, right? Yeah, so the, the glyph after the blood of fortification is obviously overpower. And this is, come on, we are doing an overpower build. We definitely will need this glyph to dominate. So after blood drinker is dominate, and the next one would be control. Because blood wave slows enemies. The decrepify also slows enemies. So we're actually getting always pretty much always getting our crowd control. And the control glyph always gives the best uh, skilling in terms of the uh, damage. But because this is a solo build, right? We do need some damage reduction. So you can choose to use the um, territorial you want to but uh, it's a bit more costly in terms of the notes for dexterity wise but it's doable because there's a lot of dexterity here okay so basically we will have to drop this so the eight percent resistance to all elements then intelligence drop the seven willpower that will give us two dexterity right then we have to find we will have to drop something else somewhere else to get dexterity here which is also kind of the reason why uh, I didn't go for Territorial. But if you really want to go for Territorial, you definitely can. It's just uh, there have to be some cards meet somewhere. Yeah, maybe the card will be on the really on the defensive notes, which feels bad, right? You gotta remove 150 armor, 20 intelligence, and 8 resistance. Oh, and 7 willpower in order to use territory here. So the whole purpose of using territory was to get that damage reduction. But in order to get that the damage reduction, you have to remove some of the defensive nodes. So yeah, it's a little too painful, which is the reason why I still went with the defensive nodes instead of territory. Okay. But one thing to note is that control doesn't work on the bosses until they are staggered. So territory has an advantage, definitely has an advantage over there. So up to you guys, you which you prefer. I think Territorial might be better eventually. The actual game itself, you know, because survivability is always important too. Yeah. And for here, you notice I went to get this node cluster here with the attack speed. So I guess uh, if you want to drop, maybe you can drop one, one of these lucky hit magic node. All right, that will help. But uh, we need to find another node somewhere else in order to use territory. So at least you only drop one uh, defense, one pair of defense node, basically. Well, maybe something here. But I like the bonus damage to healthy enemies because remember what I always say, right? The bonus damage to healthy enemies basically is like the, the moment you meet an enemy, it always applies. 
Oh, and we do get scans of death as well. Because like a scan of death is really good. Worse either way, right? Either you get damage reduction or you get increased damage. No matter what, it will give you some health boost without being conditional or anything like that. Oh, and the last glyph we get for uh, obviously undaunted, additional bonus damage for fortify and more damage reduction with uh, the more mod fortify you have. Which is the reason why we spend some additional notes here just to get the willpower for the uh, requirement. Yep. Okay. So the Paragon bot for the Blood Wave solo is actually pretty straightforward. Yep. It's just uh, five bots, including the starting bot. Okay, so I hope the video has been helpful to you guys so far. Yeah, effectively, uh, I've shared a build using Blood Wave. So, you know, you use your Blood Skill Ultimate. Uh, it's also using Blood Search. And we have one with Solo and one with uh, Minions. Now, personally, out of the few, the three Blood Builds I've shared right now, right? If I include the build from the previous uh, video, I think this is the one that I'm most keen to try out. Right? Blood Wave along with uh, Death Speaker's Pendant. Probably be the one that is the most fun because of how easy it is for you to constantly replenish your essence and cast your Blood Novas. Yep. Oh, uh, I should do a quick note of Blood Lance versus uh, Blood Search because uh, you might be wondering why when I'm doing a Blood Build, I'm not doing Blood Lance, right? Because when you look at this in theory, this also spawns the blood all under the first enemy hit and it does its uh, guaranteed overpower. Although you do need to cast blood lance eight times. So more attack speed. Even attack speed is even more important on the blood lance build than the blood search build. But here's the thing. Blood lance has a very, very awkward and clunky effect. If you have if you have tried it during the beta. So what happens is you throw a blood lance, it lingers on an enemy. It's like uh, leaving a mark on the enemy and while you throw it to other enemies the more enemies you have they are marked or lanced every time you throw a blood lance those lanced enemies will take damage as well so in theory this sounds really good it's kind of like a slow ramp up into like a lot of exponential damage right but here's the thing it's very hard to apply blood lance to multiple enemies because the effect that allows you to pierce only allows you to pierce through enemies that are lanced. So if an enemy is not marked, what happens is that when it goes through the first marked enemy, once you reaches an enemy that's not marked, your projectile will no longer pierce. So you will end up with, say, uh, from one marked enemy to two marked enemies. It doesn't mark everyone in a straight line. It doesn't pierce through everyone and mark everyone. So this is really, really bad. I don't understand why they have to limit Bloodlands to this extent. Yeah, I, 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 I can't stand it. They are making this a little way too clunky to be good. It's precisely, precisely because of this uh, interaction, right? That I feel that it's not worthwhile going for Bloodlands. But on top of that, this Lance effect for Bloodlands only lasts for 3 seconds. So it's very, very easy for you to run out. Which means that it's very, very irritating because you're going to have to continuously uh, spread and apply your blood lances. Even if there's an aspect that, that gives you a percentage chance to fire off one more blood lance, right? This 3 second thing is a killer. And not to mention, if you remember, when we finally finish up the uh, blood ops from your blood wave, right? You will be casting blood mist to again explode, uh, consume all the corpses, spawn the blood ops, and then you collect the buffs. But the problem with this is, well, we are exploding corpses and doing all this stuff, blood mist only lasts for 3 seconds. Okay, rather, or rather blood mist alone lasts for 3 seconds. Which means whatever work you have done in lancing or marking the enemies earlier are all basically reset and wasted. Not to mention, uh, in between uh, the point where we finish using our essence from spamming blood search to actually moving and collecting the blood ops from blood wave, right? That's also time wasted in terms of the, the lance duration. 
So all in all, it feels like it feels very very bad where we have to constantly it's a constant uphill battle to try and lance as many enemies as possible, and yet it only stays on the enemy for three seconds. But obviously, I understand that you know, on on, on this for these three seconds while you are you are you are setting up per se, right? Every time you are setting up, you also do the damage to whoever were already lance prior to you casting this. So in theory, I guess it's not that bad if you think of it that way. But it doesn't change the fact that it's clunky, you know? Yeah, I mean, we do get a bit more damage. Uh, the In fact, the damage grows exponentially on the primary target and then slowly on the second and third and fourth. But like I said, it feels very, very bad and very, very clunky. If this passive allows you to just pierce through everyone and maybe do something like a 15% reduced damage to consecutively reduce damage to subsequent enemies, then it's still not so bad because it's easy to reapply. But I guess this might make it a little too OP too. Yeah, I'm not liking liking how this this uh, entire skill works out. If you have tried it in beta, it really feels very clunky. So it's the reason why I'm not using Blood Lance at all. Even though Blood Lance, other than getting guaranteed overpower, we also spawn Blood Orb. So spawning a Blood Orb is good, right? Because in this current build, that's what that's what we want to do. We want to spawn as many Blood Orbs as possible. But it's because of all the reasons I've mentioned that I think that Blood Search is better than Blood Lance, at least for now. Before there's any other um, aspect for blood lance that we don't know about or unit for blood lance that we don't know about. Example. But based on what we know now that is in the planner, yeah, I'm gonna go with blood search for all my blood builds. Okay. So yep, I've shared all three builds uh in two videos. This is my favorite and my go-to, to be honest. But it sort of depends on how Necro will will work out uh eventually in the end game. Uh, I fear that Necro is going to be like an early game, decent character or strong character even, but falling off in the late game. Well, let's see how that goes. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys uh, next video, which uh, if I really want to complete Necro builds, right, it will be the Shadow Necro. But I kind of want to switch things up a bit and go for the Barbarian. In fact, I want to talk about Overpower, Hota, Stunner, Hammer of the Agents. Because there's a lot of stun involved in this build and Overpower and Hammer of the Agents. And it's very, very fun and there's no shouts. Most important thing, there's no shouts in this build. So it feels a lot more uh, refreshing compared to like a triple shot build. Yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll cover this next. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. If you like the content, remind my video and click subscribe for more. Bye.